Here we are to preview yet another team before IPL 2022 and it is a finalist of IPL 2021. Yup, KKR is you guessed right and we have of course one of our esteemed writers as usual, Shubhagarwal, who joins us of course from the comfort of his home and is going to be partying tomorrow with the rest of the office while I'm just sitting at home which is a topic for another day. But time to get serious because look, like I said, KKR, they've no... They don't have Morgan anymore. They have a new man in charge. They have, of course, Trias Iyer, but they still have Brendan McCollum in terms of the coaching reins. And, of course, that man that you can see in the picture as well, Andre Russell. First and foremost, Shub, how are you feeling? Because I'm hearing that you're under the weather. Yes, I have been under the weather, but uh, it's always fun to discuss IPL with you. So, I, so <laughs> you asked me and I thought, yeah, let's uh, hop onto the first uh, train on offer. Absolutely. So let's, of course, do it like how we always do it. We'll show the viewers right now KKR squad depth and we'll save the fluff early for the later part of the show, I'm guessing. Now, it's a similar squad from last time. There's some familiar candidates like Ben Shire, Andre Russell, like I mentioned, Pat Cummins. But most of them, of course, uh, will join the squad in due course, especially Pat Cummins. This graphic that you can see in your screen show, Talk me through it. What stands out? What appeals to you the most, my friend? Right. To be honest, if you look at it, uh, if you look at this graphic, they seem to be pretty sorted to me. But then once you try to frame their playing eleven, uh, you will see the major voids that are there in uh, that are there in their composition. So uh, what I feel is that during the auction, KKR were keen to uh, they were keen to shoot themselves in the foot. Uh, why? Because they went in with the purse, with the with, with the limited purse of 48 crores, and then they spent uh, around 16 crores from that purse on Nitish Rana and Shiva Mavi. Now both of them are good players, but are they good enough to uh, to spend extravagantly on when you are going in with a limited purse? I don't think so. And because of that, what happens is that uh, Ajinkya Rahane becomes their first choice opener. Uh, and then Umesh Yadav becomes one uh, becomes one of their first choice Indian pacers. None of them, I feel, are uh, currently in a position to uh, to occupy two such crucial spots in any IPL franchise. And I think those two are really big voids uh, in the KKR lineup. And because of uh, multiple openers, as you saw in that graphic, because of multiple opening uh, options available, they can still absorb uh, that. Uh, uh, they can still absorb that uh, second opening slot, but uh, doing the same for Umesh Adav, that is quite impossible. Umesh Adav has to play, and he, despite being available uh, for the uh, for each of the last two seasons, he has played only two IPL games. He has been benched for 26 IPL games at least in the last two years. That shows that where he is in his career, and when he is your spearhead, one of your spearhead Indian pacers, you know that something is wrong with that side. <laughs> yeah, I mean, points summed up perfectly by you. Like, when I think of Umesh Yadav, I think of him trying to defend that 26 run over against MS Dhoni and then Pathe Patel with that run out, of course, which comes back to mind. But we've got to apologize also for the viewers. They might be scratching their head. Nitish Rana is not an overseas pro. Again, our graphics team, I don't know, oh, sometimes yeah, they kind yeah. of really chuff things up, but it's fine. We'll yeah. take it with a pinch yeah. of salt. Shub, in yeah. terms of KKR, they always kind of go heavy on their spinners. Right now, I can see Varun Chakravarti, Sunil Narayan will bring that. And Mohamed Nabi, more importantly, and not to forget Anukul Roy, who brings a lot in the field as well. Do you think that is going to work well for them, especially on the slow and low surfaces in Maharashtra? Well, if the surfaces are low and slow, that is going to do wonders for them. Because if you, re if you remember what happened last year as well, when KKR came back uh, into the reckoning, uh, they kept storming back from number 7 to number 2 and then play the final as well. It was because they played a majority of their games in Sharjah, which had really uh, sluggish pitches. And uh, on those tracks, Narayan and Chakravarti really comes into the game. They thrived a lot and uh, that is what uh, uh, that is how KKR you know, marched forward. And uh, if the surfaces of IPL are low and slow, it will really help KKR. If not, if they are, uh, if they are, if we see high scoring games in the start, that will neutralize two of their key players. And uh, that is one of the major concerns for, uh, for KKR right now, I feel. 
Yeah, and I completely agree with you. I think a lot of uh, Kolkata fans watching this from the City of Joy would not disagree with Shubh here. Right, let's talk about their playing 11 then, their strongest 11 on paper. Now, you've got to take into consideration that Pat Cummins won't be available for the first game. We can completely acknowledge that fact because he'll be, of course, still in Pakistan playing his trade for the Australian national team. The other names that stand out here is Sam Billings, who has been flirting with a lot of teams in terms of the starting eleven, but not really getting a look in. He, of course, represents CSK earlier. Uh, what else strikes you the most when we look at their playing eleven? Is it higher and higher, going higher and higher? Sorry for the puns, but Nitish Rana comes to mind. Andre Russell, of course. Is this their strongest eleven on paper, Shub, or are we missing a few key names? I think this has to be their strongest 11. I have kept out Ajinkya Rahane from this. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, and I've chosen to open with Sunil Narayan actually because I feel Narayan, if you have him in the side and if you want to use him as a batsman, just throw him as an opener. If he fires, then he will keep you ahead of the run rate for at least major, for a major part of the innings. If he does not, then you are not missing out much. You, you, you haven't... Uh, lost a key player right at the top and with Shreya Sahya coming at number three, I think if in cases when Narayan gets out early, uh, Ayer coming inside the power play is a blessing in disguise for KKR because I think he is a player, Ayer is a player, the earlier he comes out to bat, it is the better, it, it is better for both Ayer and his side as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, that is why and, he, and plus the fact so that, and sorry to interrupt you plus the fact that he said that he likes batting at number three we saw how he did demolish Sri Lanka in that T20 series but more importantly Aaron Finch I mean that's a name which has kind of done the rounds throughout IPL history and he now finds himself as a Kolkata Knight Rider do you think he can probably I don't know bring the best out of him and Benkrish Ayer up top that left right combination or is that wishful thinking? I think it's a wishful thinking now because <laughs> un unfortunately there are just uh, some top international players who have not been able to crack the code in the IPL. For example, Oyen Morgan last year we saw I I had huge hopes from Oyen Morgan because when he was bought by KKR in two so before 2020 he was in supreme form, but uh, he came to IPL things went off uh, things uh, went off track for him and uh, it, he he just became one of those. Uh, uh, very good international players who has not been able to cut it in IPL. So, and I feel Aaron Finch is now on the same train, uh, unfortunately. And uh, yeah, I think uh, I think Finch comes in as a good backup, but uh, to start with him, I don't think that will be an ideal situation for K KKR right now, especially given they need their fourth overseas spot for a wicketkeeper. I don't. Uh, they have the op option of Sheldon Jackson, but I think Sam Billings is too good a player to stay on bench for that long. Uh, and um, yeah, hence I feel yeah, yeah, Finch should not start. Uh, if things does not work out for them, maybe then. Uh, but uh, uh, to start the tour tournament, he, I don't see him in, in their strongest eleven right now. Yeah, I fully agree with you. Let's just finish this chat by asking you, of course, uh, how they will go about their business this year because the last two years or three years with Owen Morgan there. They were obsessed with matchups, if that's fair to say. Do you think they'll employ the similar route with Shreya Sire and Brendan McCollum, or will it be more off the cuff? You feel? Yeah, I think uh, their composition, their uh, their tactics will be similar, especially with Brendan McCollum still uh, uh, still at the helm. Uh, he has been a big guy for for the matchups, and uh, uh, yeah, I think uh, it's a straightforward answer that yeah, they will keep. Uh, you know, uh, they will stay with the uh, with the matchups. Yeah, let's yeah. see how it let's really see. unfolds in due course. Remember, Kolkata Knight Riders will be playing that first game against the Chennai Super Kings to get the IPL 2022 campaign up and running. So, wish them all the best because they'll need it, given the fact that they've rejuvenated their squad. Shub, thanks so much for your time. Enjoy Hyderabad. We'll see you soon. And there's plenty of analysis from Shub, of course, which you guys can catch on cricket.com. And you can catch my pretty face if you guys want to on the YouTube channel. Until the next time, it's a goodbye from him, of course, and me as well.